I want us to maybe take a step back uh, and, and talk briefly about Puti, uh, the person here. Uh, where did it all start? Uh, just talk briefly to us about sort yeah. of your own upbringing and uh, what that looked like. Yeah. So I, I was brought up by parents who really focused on opportunity. Um, and, and that really helped me a lot in not focusing on negativity, but always looking for the positive aspect. Sure. Um, and so I, as a result of that, they put us in private schools in, in the 80s. I didn't know that the... There were, you know, these private schools then, but uh, there were these convents, uh, mm. Catholic convents, and that's where we were. And after that, I went to the States uh, to do my undergrad and then to the UK mm. for, for my master's degree. Um, and then came back to South Africa, but then also went to New York again. Sure, sure. Um, but um, I guess the the last um, big corporate role I held was with Shanduka, mm. um, whom I was with from 2004 to 2015. Mm. And it's, it, it has been an, an incredible experience yeah. um, of working with businesses that don't exist or are really just startups to watching them become, you know, significant players. Mm. Um, and in, in the case of Shanduka, you know, being part of it has, has been uh, incredible. Mm. Um, and then, of course, after Shanduka went and uh, with the fund, uh, we were investing into other businesses here in South sure. Africa. Um, so, so my background has really been with working with financiers mm. um, and as well as working with a bank where we were putting in capital through the, the DBSA, um, to then being actually in an entity where we were investors ourselves, mm. you know, looking for capital to come to us. Um, and, and it's been an incredible thing. Yeah. And, and the one thing that stood out for me in all of this is the importance of these relationships that you maintain. Um, because ultimately, particularly when you re, you know, running a founder-led business, mm. it, people are investing into what that founder is capable of. What they of. represent, yeah. Absolutely, what, what they can produce going forward. Mm. Um, and that is what we are doing at Nasper. So we are looking at founder-led businesses and looking at how we can support them sure. to actually bring their visions into significant businesses. Yeah, let's take a step back here slightly, sure. because I think, you know, as you were charting the path of, of your own work um, mm. in the world of uh, sort of finance right through to Shanduka, yeah. uh, you've certainly in your own career, I guess, mm. experienced uh, what many people would suggest is the last two decades of the deal landscape. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about some of the things that you saw, even in your own early days, straight out of university, into that uh, a space in the 90s, right through to where we are now in terms of not only uh, the pipeline of deals that are coming through, but also how, I guess, the, the, the ecosystem, uh, mm. it might be in sort of venture capital, it might be um, in, uh, in the BFI space, mm. uh, how they are interacting with opportunities that are emerging in the landscape. Yeah. So, you know, in, in, in the 90s, um, which was a time when I came back to South Africa, I had been working for Fieldstone in New York. Mm. Um, that's when we had black empowerment um, starting in, in South Africa. Deals, yeah. Those were the first few deals. And I was very excited to come and get involved in those. And I was very fortunate when I came back to South Africa, I immediately got involved in some of those um, significant transactions that were done. Um, now, this was different. It was corporate finance transactions, um, and there was a lot of equity funding available for those types of transactions. Um, and then over the years, what we saw was that there was a lot more debt funded uh, transactions, mm. you know, with um, very thin slithers of equity available. What do you think drove that? Um, I think for one thing, the markets um, were, um, you, they made it possible. So there was the ability to service these long-term mm. debts um, that, that, that were there. So there was no issues of covenants, you know, uh, being thrown out. So we, we had very good markets uh, for, for a, a long period of time. Um, but at the same time, I think also, you know, for funders, and South Africa tends to be quite conservative from a funding perspective. Um, and, 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 and what I think was happening was that funders were looking for the ability to fund without necessarily taking the full risk That's themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and hence why you had less um, sort of um, equity being available for many transactions. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, and, and the result worked for some, but for others where things didn't work out that well, all they ended up doing was servicing debt and never really realized any, you know, net asset value out of that mm. transaction. So it wasn't, you know, useful or fruitful for those investors. Um, but, you know, so, so, so it's, it, we, we've 
gone through the full course sure. um, in South Africa from, from periods where things were excellent, markets were great, to a time, you know, in the 2000s where markets were a mm. lot tougher, uh, particularly after 9-11. What do you think we are Well, now? you know... Post-07, post-08. Yeah. yeah. Well, South Africa continues, obviously, to be in, in, in a very difficult um, environment. Um, and, and, you know, for me, the greatest concern is for the millions of South Africans who, you know, are having difficulty because they've had access to far less better quality, you know, education, mm. um, and therefore have less opportunities for employment, good employment. Sure. Um, and, you know, and, and, and from the perspective where I sit now, it's, it's also the issue of, you know, if you haven't had that much of a good education, mm. um, what quality entrepreneur can you be? Because being an entrepreneur, it's, it's not just about having an idea, but to be able to execute on that, mm. on that you need to have experience. Um, and education is important to mm. understand your industry so that you're making the right calls. Yeah. Um, so I think where we are now, it, 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 you know, as we all know, it's still mm. a difficult uh, period, but notwithstanding that, it remains an opportunistic uh, time. If we are willing to put capital to mm. it. And that's what NASPERS has done. Sure. NASPERS has said that we have capital that we are willing to put to South Africa. We are willing to risk that capital mm. with entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs in South Africa, who have ideas that aren't necessarily profitable, but it's ideas that look mm. like they could be big businesses in, in, in South Africa. And so we want to back those. And so that is what we are doing. Sure. And, um, and, and, and I'm hoping that, you know, we'll be able to attract great um, uh, entrepreneurs, mm. uh, founders who, you know, we can um, help to establish into significant players, yeah. not only in South Africa, but globally. We'll come back to the foundry and sure, some of the th interesting sure. things that, are, that yeah. are happening there. And yeah. of course, some of the fascinating opportunities that you're seeing there. Yeah. But let's take a step back and take a look at NASPERS. Yeah. Uh, as an entity, as a, I guess, a, you know, a corporate creature, if I can yeah. use that uh, very um, crude characterization. But um, early beginnings as a national Pers, mm. um, as a really a newspaper company, you know, mm. that kind of old school courant type yeah. business, yeah. to now being in the 21st century, an entity that has its tentacles in many different spaces. Sure. Um, what, what do you make of what, I guess, has started to emerge from NASPERS in the last few years or so prior to you joining? Yeah. This whole idea of saying, we want by a certain period to be a full internet business. Yeah. Um, just let's talk about the strategic rationale of that. Yeah. Statement. So, you know, I think with, with uh, NASPERS, what I've seen is that we, we really have had, we, we've got visionaries mm. um, in, in the business. Um, if you look from the time when, you know, Quiz was running the business. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of the businesses that were being invested into were startup businesses. Mm. Um, and it's interesting when you look at the fact that Naspers used to own MTN, um, yes. and you know, and and obviously we we divested, um, and you know, multi choice which we uh, divested from just mm. uh, this year. Um, you know, these are, are, are great businesses in in, in South Africa, um, and 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 it, so it's been excellent to see how we've been able to invest into mm. and divest from certain businesses, and then there are businesses that we've remained in for the long term, such as, as you mentioned, with the, the, the media, mm. um, you know, Media 24, you know, we, that, that's a business that we've been in sure. for many, many years. Um, and, you know, it's, it, it, it's that process of knowing which businesses to remain a long-term investor mm. in and, and which ones to also decide maybe it's time to divest. It's sure. not because it's a bad business, but because your time in it has ended. Mm. Um, and so with our divesture, as an example, from multi-choice, it was because in that time we were mm. already focusing on becoming a, at least, you know, close to 100%, you know, internet-based sure. business, um, which is what, you know, we are today. Mm. If you look at our category, whether it's in food, whether it's in classifieds, um, whether, you know, any of the industries that, that we are in, we are focusing on businesses that we can be in for the long term, but mm. that are making a difference in people's lives. Mm. Um, and, and, and that's what attracts me to this business. It's in an industry that is, is, is new, sure. uh, still remains new in, in, in the world, but it's an industry that is so relevant mm. to the lives of people every day. 
Let's take a look at uh, uh, the media side of things. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the trends that you're seeing there? Um, a lot of people saying print is dead, mm. um, but uh, how have you been able to ensure that you're able to access your consumer through the traditional channel, but also increasingly yeah. through some of the new online and internet-based channels? Yeah. In South Africa, yes, we see that we are moving towards a digital business as well. Um, but it's it's at a, a it's a bit of a slower pace, mm. but it, it is certainly moving there. Um, and the issue is really for us to be ready for that. Sure. Um, and and I'm I'm very happy that you know in our case you know Media Twenty Four mm. is already has already started the process of transforming towards being a digital business. Um, and you know so so we are able to continue to provide the printed um, you know. Uh, media to our mm. consumers, but at the same time, we are also available on the digital side as mm. well. And that is something that is very relevant for us because when you look at many of the people that are, you know, readers of our magazines, our mm. newspapers and all of that, um, many of them are young people. Sure. And so it's important that we're able to serve them appropriately mm. for their needs. Mm. You speak about profitability of, yeah. of those platforms, uh, and if you consider um, you know, declining levels of circulation. You consider some of the preferences of many of those in the advertiser community as well. Mm. Um, in the future that you see, do, do you continue to see uh, the presence of some of these assets under your stable as a strategic rather than just a pure profit place? Absolutely. I think for um, an entity such as NASPERS, um, where we are not only focused on profitability today. Um, we, we are focused on creating value for our shareholders, mm. but that doesn't mean that you do it at the expense of pushing for profitability in a particular business sure. um, at the expense of hurting it. Um, and so, you know, Bob is leading the business in making sure that, you know, we can, you know, be able to create value from, from businesses. So, for instance, if you look at um, the classifieds business in mm. Russia, which today is a profitable business, um, whereas we also have other businesses which are still in, in the early earlier stages. Sure. But we'll get to that point where mm. they are highly profitable businesses. Um, and, and, and so it, it, it is a process of, of just managing that, mm. you know, um, getting to, to, to that stage where you can get businesses sure, to be profitable. Sure. And, you know, fortunately in a NASPERS case, we, we are able to, to, to take on mm. that journey. Um, but it is always with the mind of the investor sure. at, at, at heart. Let's talk about e-commerce. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess uh, I would lump together with that, the yeah. classifieds business, the food delivery businesses that you undertake. One of the things for me that has really been fascinating, mm. um, experiencing it on the side as a consumer, is how you've been able to sweat a common set of assets mm -hmm. um, and be able to deliver different product um, lines and revenue lines and uh, different offerings to your customers mm -hmm. on the back of that. Um, I make the example of a Mr. D, for instance. Yes. A Mr. D delivering uh, a take-a-lot order mm -hmm. or a superbulous order. Yeah. Um, already, I think, at face value for a consumer that says, here's a business that ideally might be using the existing base of either warehouse capability or even its expansive distribution network to be able to service different entities within the stable. Talk to us about that strategy and more importantly, whether or not uh, it's certainly paid off for you. Well, it, it, it certainly has paid off um, and it has been a process of making sure that you have access to all of those different um, you know, quadrants that, that, that are required mm. in that. Um, but you know, it, it certainly has paid off, um, but it's you know, to, 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 to get to a point where all of that is, is sufficiently profitable and, mm. and, and yielding the returns that, that you want is a bit of um, a long-term period. Sure, sure. Um, but we certainly um, have moved a long way. Um, if you look at Mr. Delivery today, mm. um, if you look at any of, of the divisions that we have within Take A Lot, um, you know, it, it's just a process of taking them through that period where you are investing into those businesses sure. and then getting to that point where they can be um, highly profitable businesses. The One of the things that is critical with all these businesses is that these are high employers of people. Mm. Ordinary people in South Africa who typically would not have access to, to, to employment, they have the ability to be employed. And so if you look at a business like Take A Lot, mm. they employ a number of 
unskilled people who are able to be employed for the long term. Sure. Um, and, and their earnings are very much based on the ability, their ability to put mm. in more of, of, of the work uh, that, that, that is required. So, you know, it, 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 it's been significant to, to, to see that. And, and the other thing is the growth of, of the business. Yes. Uh, Take a Lot has, is, is, has been growing um, quite significantly. And, and you see it also through the number of people that are being brought mm. into the business as well, um, when I talk about the employment generation. So, you know, these are businesses that, that are important for South Africa mm. going forward, and we'd like to, to, to see sure. them continue to grow and also maintaining their market share. Let's talk about how being an international player yeah. is able to at least give you some learnings uh, from your other presence in other markets across yeah. the globe uh, to your South African ones. And I, and I make mention in particular of a market like India. Yeah. A lot of uh, you know similarities with us, similar colonial history, society in transition, probably a lot more people than what we have here. Uh, but I remember you know visiting Flipkart uh, yeah. and hearing people telling us that 55 million people go through that platform every day. Mm. And that's close on the population here in South Africa. Yeah. That's a business you've been involved in before as yes. NASPAS globally. Yeah. It's a business you've sort of divested from. Yeah. I'm quite interested in what learnings have uh, uh, you know, filtered from that experience, mm. uh, having now left it, mm. that ha I guess can be taken on in a take a lot here and many of the other platforms that you have. So I, I, I don't have experience with mm. Flipkart because I wasn't, Especially, that, okay. that was all mm. uh, be, be before my time. Um, but certainly what I can say is the fact that, you know, looking at, at our businesses, we are continuously looking at ways in which we can learn from the different businesses sure. that, that, that we are in. Um, if, if I say, if I take a look at our, the education side of our business, mm. uh, where we have Baijus and a number of yes. uh, other businesses in India, um, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible to see how these businesses that started off as essentially just founder-led entities uh, without any significant shareholders are today having these significant shareholders mm. globally. Um, and, and not only that, but they're making an impact in the lives of Indian communities. Sure. You know, um, you know in, in the case of the founder of, of Baijus, he would, um, he would have these sessions at a stadium mm. uh, where he'd have these uh, maths courses that he'd be running and, and all of this. I mean, to fill a stadium, of, of people watching you do uh, a maths formula. It's, it's, it's incredible. Well, in you a know? maths crazy <laughs> country that's billion strong. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. It's incredible. So it's, it's, it's been wonderful to see um, and, and, and to be able to be part of and to grow these businesses. Mm. Um, you know, and, and that's what's unique about NASPERS. Um, you know, just the other time when we were in, in San Francisco, I met this young 21-year-old mm -hmm. Um, who is, you know, running a business that that we have funded into, and uh, she was talking about uh, the difficulties of getting a visa. She's based in Russia. The business mm. is in Russia, and uh, coming to America, the difficulties of that, because you know, getting people to believe that at 21 she's running this business and she's got these investors. They want to give her an award, it's a scam. and <laughs> exactly. <It's a> scam. <laughs> but yeah. that's how the world has evolved. Yeah. You know. Um, you know, if, if I look at our businesses in India, one of our founders graduated from Harvard when he was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's incredible stories that we find mm -hmm. um, just through partnering with people that in the past would typically not be even considered. Yeah. Uh, we partner with them and we're able to see them growing to a significant mm. scale. Um, and, and so here in South Africa, what we would like to do is to see, you know, as we are investing in these businesses, sure. as we have with Sweep South and others that we'll be investing into, um, and, and we have a significant pipeline, it's, 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 it's seeing them being able to scale up mm. to another level where they become global players sure. um, and can make a significant difference, not only to themselves, but to the many consumers of theirs. Here at home, what would you make about the access to the internet or lack thereof um, yeah. as a constraint or an enabler? Yeah. So the kind of scale that uh, Anaspas is looking for as an internet business. Yeah. So here at home, the, the, the issue is around making it affordable mm. for people to be able to have access to the internet. Undertake it, their day-to-day -day affairs online. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It was very good when we were at the investment conference in South Africa yes. 
um, hearing the president um, talk about the fact that you know, they would be making sure that, you know, the telecoms industry would have access um, to, um, to, 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 more, um, um, to, to, to more spectrum. And what I hope will happen is that as, you know, these companies have access to more spectrum, mm -hmm. the affordability will be enhanced sure. so that consumers can be able to have access to, to, to the internet. And then new products can be developed mm. and, you know, new markets, new consumers, all of that can sure, be created. Sure, sure. So, so that is what we, we see as the largest constraint in South Africa. Mm. It's really in um, enabling the environment so that, you know, the internet space can grow. And we have large players who are here in South Africa, international players like NASPERS, mm. who want to back local players. Sure. Um, the difference with NASPERS is that we have dedicated capital to back these entities. And we are there not for the short term. We're uh -huh. not saying that we're a private equity funder and we have a three-year view on your business or a five-year view. Sure. We're here for the long term. And we want to see your business. It certainly does make you an attractive prospect for, for an innovator, for, yeah. for somebody who's out there, who's got a fascinating and a very disruptive concept, who's really looking to be able to scale this into different markets. Right. Uh, to have a NASPERS interested because, you know, for a sweep south, that means the potential of being able to take a sweep south to Poland, for instance, yes. or to a Russia. Absolutely. Or to uh, the United Kingdom. Where Absolutely. One would think that the demand for domestic work mm. on demand yes. is probably as. Um, as big as here in South Africa, if not larger. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. So, so that's that's the next issue is, mm -hmm. is to be looking at, at the expansion. And, and we've already been having those discussions with them. Yeah. They're busy now looking at expanding the products that sure. they have available uh, to their consumer. You touched on the foundry early on, and mm -hmm. you, you let us know what that is. Mm -hmm. But I'm quite interested in how, what I would call our national system of innovation influences mm -hmm what comes out at the end, yeah. um, how a sweeps out, for instance, comes out at the yeah. end, or any other innovation that is relevant to your own business. Yeah. And when I say the national system of innovation, I mean the universities, I mean yeah. the DFIs who yeah. uh, should finance the commercialization of some of these uh, uh, issues. And then, of course, mm. the entire system, mm. even the education system that mm. you were referring to that yeah. undergirdles a lot of this kind of innovation. Absolutely. What do you make of that? And what are some of the fascinating things that mm. have certainly come onto your desk or in your inbox that you think yeah. you know, have made you sit up and say, actually, we're probably onto something here? So, so the first thing is that we, we've seen the importance of being able to partner with universities. Mm. Um, and, and they themselves have been very forthcoming. Um, so within weeks of me joining NASPERS, I had the chancellor and vice chancellor of, U, of uh, uh, Wits University mm. who came to see me. Sure. Um, and you know, we spoke about how we could be working together to see, you know, to, to, to support mm. these internet-based uh, companies um, because they um, have an entity, a hub that they've set up um, for a number of these founders to develop these ideas. Sure. Um, and so we, we are having discussions with them to see how we could be, you know, um, supporting some of those. But similarly, we've had discussions also um, with uh, a variety of other universities at the, as the University of uh, UJ, mm. um, as well as uh, Stellenbosch University sure. as well, um, to, to, to see how we can be supporting mm. these founder-led businesses. Um, but over and above that, the other thing that I did when I joined immediately was to then look at the, the founding side, sure. to talk to VCs, to talk mm. to uh, banks um, and various entities, um, to, to just look at how many of the entities are approaching funding mm. of, of these transactions. Um, and, and I think what, what makes us unique is the fact that we tend to have this uh, long tenor mm. um, on these investments. Um, and, and, and also, you know, because we're not a fund, um, we, we are able to give a bit more flexibility sure. in, in how we so look at it. it's patient and flexible capital. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and, and that really works with the founders because you can grow with them. You're not mm. sort of giving them time-based growth, you know? <laughs> mm. um, obviously, everybody would like to see growth as soon as possible, sure. but it, it needs to be enduring growth, mm. um, you know? So, so, so we, you know, we were really enjoying it. And, and 
I think a lot has been done in creating the market. Sure. Um, but what we want to do is to add on to that. So with the capital that we're making available, we're making it possible for many of the founders to be able to mm. realize uh, their businesses be having prominence. Um, and so it's, it's been easy for us to come into the environment mm. and we want to do more to create a real sure. um, sort of California type environment um, so that these internet based businesses have an environment where they can mm. grow. Um, you know, if you go to Kenya, you see the same sure. has, has started to, to, to happen there. Um, Nigeria, it's the same. Mm. Um, and, and South Africa, we want to see that happening sure. as well. But interestingly enough, um, I must say that when we started with the foundry, we saw that there's already a significant community. Mm. In Johannesburg, Cape Town, um, we've seen a number of transactions um, that are available for us to potentially fund. Sure. Um, so we're just going through that process of uh, looking at, at those. Okay. Now, you know, somebody uh, said, I think about a year ago, that data is to the 21st century what fuel and steel, uh, or oil and steel, I should rather say, were to the 20th century. Absolutely. As an internet business, uh, yeah. one would think that you're sitting on massive data sets, not only here in South Africa, but across the continent. Mm. Um, on the one hand, how, how do you make commercial sense of that? How do you commercialize and monetize that? But also yeah. on the other, how do you ensure that you put that to good use uh, mm. towards social ends as well? Yeah. So for us, um, being able to, to, to monetize it or finding the commercial solution to yes. it is, is something that is critical because that's what gives you the longevity mm. to, to, towards making sure that whatever it is that the solution is, whether in a sweep south type of business, um, it's, it's, it's something that is creating an, a response to a certain consumer set. Mm. Um, it, it, it's important that you're able to, to do that, but also finding ways to make sure that you are supporting businesses that um, are the right solution for the environment. And we, we are very, very, very keen to be backing businesses that are providing the right solution mm. in South Africa. And it's part of the reason why there are certain businesses that we will not sure. uh, support, um, because we want to, 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 to back businesses that are, are bringing solutions to the mm. future of South Africans. And so, in South Africa, if, if I can just digress a little bit sure, from, sure. from your question, it's been interesting to see how, you know, it, it, it's such a, a variety of industries that, that we are finding ourselves potentially impacting mm. on, as opposed to the industries that we are currently in, in the rest of the world. Sure. Um, so as an example, um, you know, we're seeing transactions in the agriculture industry. Mm. Um, we, we are seeing transactions in very different industries for, to anything that, that we have looked at um, in, in the past. But at the end of the day, it comes back to mm. the question that you posed. It's looking at the commercial capabilities, mm. um, but also the commercial capabilities, not only for the next 10 years, for us, it's about being able to scale that up Sure. you know, beyond South Africa. Um, and so, you know, it's important that we're able to mm. see uh, the right returns, um, not only for us, but also for sure. the, the founder, um, that, that we're able to see that, but also to, to see that um, whilst also knowing that we're making the right impact mm. in the lives of people. Sure. Sure. Um, so back in the right businesses. Because if, if you're playing the long game, uh, certainly the continued sustainability and the viability yeah. of your business is also reliant on, on the fortunes of many of your consumers. Absolutely. Uh, both current and future. Yeah. You said you were in China yesterday. Yes. What does a day look like in, in, <laughs> in the world of the CEO of yeah. uh, one of the yeah. largest and yeah. potentially, I would argue, uh, one of the sort of nascent mega internet yeah. businesses um, here in South Africa? Sure. Um, I've, I've been CEOs in other businesses, but yeah. being a CEO in this company is very, very different. Okay. Um, what about, what I've, about I've, different? I've been to, to, to China many times. In, in, in the company that I was in before, Shanduka, mm. we had uh, the Chinese Investment Corporation as a, um, our shareholder. So sure. I, I would go to Beijing quite a lot. But mm. um, this time I was in China for just a few hours. <laughs> Okay. It in takes, out. It takes. Who uh, gets to say that? It Who gets like, to say I go to China just in <laughs> out? <laughs> After traveling that? for so long, and and the the worst thing is that I was traveling from New York, so um, you know, so it 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 it, wow. it, it took. <laughs> yeah, um, but but that is that is the the, the business that we're in. Mm. We're in all of. Uh, the BRICS uh, markets, sure. so Brazil, Russia, India, 
China, South Africa. Um, we are, you know, and, and, and so that requires us to be able to engage mm. with these markets. Sure, sure. Um, we can't be talking about businesses that we read about, mm. um, hear of, but we are never there. Sure. Um, so when we were in India just recently, just uh, about a week or so ago, um, we, you know, Bob insisted that we had to go in one of the uh, commuter trains, you know, <laughs> so we got <laughs> the experience, yeah. you know, and I was thinking, you know, it's been a long time since I was at Baiki. Since Bi you the Since I was, like, <laughs> let's say, like, being at Baiki and being at, and, and yeah, there it was like, you, you take Baiki and you, like, add, like, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, thousands of people. So it was... Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it it was an incredible experience, mm. um, but that is that is the market that we're in. Sure, and that's we're, the nature of, of your day. It absolutely, seems, yeah. um, it's it's about being in these environments where mm. a lot of these founders are coming up with these ideas sure. and providing solutions towards those those markets. What, what do you think the geopolitics um, mm. and how they are playing themselves up? What impact do you think they're going to have on that yeah. opportunity discovery process that that is underway? You can't ignore the impasse between Beijing and Washington. Yeah. Um, and many people are suggesting that the main bone of contention there is really about fifth generation yeah. uh, network infrastructure. That, that's yeah. what people are fighting about. They can yeah. talk about everything else. Right. But in essence, that's what they're fighting about. Yeah. What does that mean for a global internet business like the one you run? Yeah. So obviously, these these are very very important issues mm. for us. We are constantly looking at you know the impact of geopolitics and um, seeing how that that will impact on 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 us. Um, you know, just now when I was you know uh, talking to some of the businesses uh, in places like uh, London and, and and all of that and and the impact. Um, that, that they are having that as a result of, of, of what's going on there. Um, and, you know, it, but what you see is that it's actually happening all over. It's, 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 it's the, the entire globe. Everyone's an emerging When you talk to now. Americans, yeah, you talk to <laughs> Americans, the same issues that they are, are dealing with there, with their own. But it's, um, and, and so we, we, are in, we are all in these processes where we face significant challenges, but it's challenges that can potentially yield opportunities. Sure. And so in South Africa, as we face the challenges that we face here, mm. um, the issue is to see how we being where we are, how we can make a difference. Mm. So it's not about the changes that a government can make to a sure. nation, but it's about what all of us as individuals can do towards contributing to a better South Africa. Sure. Um, and, you know, from an Asper's perspective, our view is we want to help founders. We've seen great businesses mm. being created in South Africa on the back of founder-led ideas. Sure. Um, and we want to continue to see that happen. And so that's where we are. Okay. Yeah. Puti, we're in a closed period, so we're going to have to end it here. Sure. I mean, I would have loved to speak about so many other things, the bidding wars that are happening. <laughs> um, but we'll have to leave it there. We'll have Praise. to leave it there. And yeah. uh, I certainly hope uh, once uh, you've announced those results, we can catch up with you again yes. uh, to speak about some of the things that are happening, not only within NASPAS here in South Africa, but across the globe as well. Thank you okay. very much for your time. Thank you.